Hi, it's Dorothy Guiding with Scrapbooking Quebec. I'm back with video three in my seven-part mini-series, Power Scrapping. In this series, I'm sharing a fun and fast, streamlined approach to using collections. In video one, I introduced the series and shared my kit. So it's 49 in Market Sunburst collection, along with some stash. In video two, I created paper packs. And in today's video, I'm going to be adding photos and designing pages. It's going to be the longest of all seven videos in this entire series, and that's because it takes me a while to explain page design. The next three videos after this will all be layout process videos. So let's pick some photos and start designing pages. So here's what I have on my desk. You can see my kit caddy. I set this up in video one and two, and you can see that my paper packs are all divided here and ready to work with today. So the only thing I did since video two is in some of these paper packs, I had some solid green papers. I switched them up a bit. Green still goes with green in each one of the kits, but some of them were darker and some of them were lighter. And basically I switched up where the lighter and darker greens go. Not to confuse you, I will point that out when I work with each one of those paper packs. Beside me on a table, here's what I have. In the videos before, I showed you that I had brought out these Simple Stories grid templates. I do plan to work with these when I make my designs today. So those are going to be probably a lot for my page two designs. I also have some additional white and black cardstock here because I may need more of it. These are just basically staples as far as I'm concerned when I scrapbook. There's already some of them in the paper packs, but I may need a bit more. So I have a bit of that handy as well. I have a pile of giant baggies. That's because when I make my page packs with the photos and page designs, I will store each page pack in a giant baggie. I just have some copy paper here along with an eraser and a pencil for taking notes and drawing designs. And Finally, I have five envelopes with photos. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I selected my photos to coordinate with each one of those paper packs. For three of my five paper packs, this is how I selected my photos. Basically, I lined up the paper from one paper pack behind my computer, then scrolled through my photos. This gave me a nice big image, and I could look at my paper and decide which photos looked best with the paper pack. Now, you can do this with your phone as well, and you can do it with your printed photos as well. But this is what I did, super easy, and just when I came across photos that I thought, wow, this works, then those are the photos I selected. So once I selected my photos, I printed them. And to decide what size to print, it was basically dependent on how many photos I plan to use on a double page spread. So first of all, you can see I have five envelopes here. Paper pack one, two, three, four, and five. So when I print photos, typically I do it in four by six, three and a half by five, and three by four. And when I do it in three by four, what I do is I use the Project Life app, put two photos on a four by six, and then print it. So again, at this point, all I did was select photos to print. The more I had for a two page spread, the smaller the photos I printed. At this stage in the game, I have absolutely no design idea in mind. So for page pack number one, for example, I have these four by six photos. I have too many of them, but I can cut them down. 
Also, I had a lot more photos, so I did them all in three by four. That way I know I can cut them down and use a grid. So for a lot of these pages, a lot of these double page spreads, I do plan to do kind of one focal point page and one grid page. Not for all of them, but for a lot of them. Here's another example here. This one here, that goes with paper pack number one. This is paper pack number three. I just wanted to give you a variety. So here's some that I did in four by six, but I actually did them as well, the same photos in three and a half by five, because I don't know by design at this point. And I have some in three by four as well. So for those ones, I did them in all three, but I have fewer photos for paper pack number three, those are these photos, than I do for paper pack number one. That's why most of these are smaller prints. So let me just set this aside and I'm going to keep the photos out for paper pack number one. And you can see I have my paper, pencil, and eraser handy here. And I'm going to get the paper for paper pack number one. So the only thing I am going to work with right now is paper pack number one in the photos plus paper pack number one, the paper right here, for embellishing. When I am setting up these pages, I am not going to add my embellishing to the page kits. I could, it's a personal choice. The only thing I am going to add is this embellishment pack here, which is the, it's called, they're basically die cut pieces, but they are these giant envelopes and pockets. And the reason why I am including them in my page packs is because of their size. Some of them are quite significant in size. And for that reason, I am going to have to have to, excuse me, factor this into the design because it takes so much space. All of the other embellishing here, the ephemera pieces, and there's another one with laser cut pieces and titles, they are all mostly smaller and I will be able to incorporate them into my embellishment clusters. I don't have a huge amount to choose from here, so I'm not worried about it. I am going to be doing it one project at a time. And if I have an idea of something specific, I will jot it down in my notes just to remember, ooh, go get that ephemera piece. But I'm not gonna worry about putting them in my page packs. I am basically going to set up my page designs with the photos and incorporate these giant pockets into the design. So let me get started with page pack number one. And the first thing I'm going to do is just give you an idea of how these page packs, page pack number one, coordinates with my photo. So that's going to be like one of my main photos here. So you can see how it coordinates nicely. And the smaller photos, well, these are kind of the smaller photos. I don't know if I'm going to use them all. These are all beachy, so it kind of works with the theme here. So you get the idea. So let's get started and try designing this page. So here I am with paper pack number one that has turned into a page kit, a double page kit. So here's my sketch. Basically, I plan to use this page as my focal point page. And 
Basically, 49 in market lends to this type of scrapbooking with its printed papers with these big images on it. So what I'm going to do is have one main photo here. I'm going to incorporate this folder. And if I have extra photos, I will have enough photos here to represent my story. But if I do have extra ones, because I did print quite a few, I'm just going to tuck them in here. So, you know, a viewer can go in and look for more photos. That's the plan at this point. I can always change. Here, basically, I'm representing scraps underneath my photo. So I plan to make kind of a layered photo mat here with a photo and this folder here with possibly extra photos. Now, I will add embellishing probably in these areas, but I'm not going to worry about that at this point in the game. I'm just basically placing my main elements I have my photo selected, paper selected, more or less the design selected. So a lot of decisions will have been made when it comes time to creating. For the complementary page, because I have so many photos, I am going to use this template to create a nine block grid. At this point, I put a spot for embellishing in the middle. That might change. It depends on if I use seven photos, eight photos, nine photos. I will make those decisions when I actually create the page. But at least I have more or less a game plan here. And I also thought I would mat my photos in white cardstock. So I just brought in two sheets of eight and a half by 11 white cardstock. That's from Stampin' Up! And I will mat my photos. So what I'm going to do with this is bag it up. I'm going to put my template to the side because I may use that on another layout. Oops, when I was creating, I put this one to the side. So I'm going to bring that one in. I have one of these giant baggies here. So what I'm going to do is take all of my papers for page pack number one. And I am going to put this in the envelope with my sketch or with my plans and my folder. Again, you can add embellishments at this point. I have decided not to because I only have three or four embellishment packs there. So it's not going to be difficult for me to consult my embellishment packs when I'm actually creating. So I'm just going to put this in the back here and paper pack or page kit now number one is complete. I'll put this over to the side and what I'm going to do is get out my paper for page kit number two. I'm also going to get out my folders here because I'm going to add that into my design and my paper and pencil. So, oh, I also need my photos at this point. Where did I put them? Oh my, I've lost my photos. Darn it. Hang on a minute. I will be back. So I found my photo. So here I go once again for this one. Okay, let's spread out the paper first just to give you an idea what is in this paper pack. This is one of the ones that I changed up the green cardstock. So when I made this paper pack, there was green cardstock in it, but it was a little bit darker. And I basically put that in another paper pack and added a lighter one here. Here are the photos I selected. So that is a picture of me. And then once again, this one, I have quite a few small photos. So I know right off the bat, I'm going to do one of those nine block grids because it's kind of like a go to for me when I have this many photos. Again, the whole point of this power scrapping series is to do it quickly. So I'm just going to put this here. I know I'm going to use my nine block grid here. And I just have to decide which one of these I want to use. And that's just, it's not enough contrast. I like the blue. I love blue and green together. So 
Maybe that's what I'll do. These are, if you look at them, the sides, you fold them over and they create little envelope pockets. Really, really cute. You know what? That's exactly what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to set this over to the side. Whoops. And now what I'm going to do is start creating my design. So let me explain design number three. So basically, once again, I had tons of photos. So I'm going to use the very same nine block grid. I love that one, especially for travel photos. So I played around a bit with the paper. I decided, so I wrote a note, blue for the background. I love the contrast it made with this green main paper here that's going to be on the left. And I also loved the green underneath there. So that pleased me, but I did find my photos needed mats. So I added some white cardstock and I noted here to add white mats. Now the main page that's going to be on the left, um, I decided I wanted it to be different than the other page. Again, I mentioned earlier uh, 49 and Market, their papers tend to lend towards a certain style of scrapbooking with all of this big imaging on the paper. So to change things up a bit, I thought maybe I would cut a giant circle in the page, back it with white, and in there, mat my photo. Now this foliage, all that's at the bottom of the page, made me think I could almost create a shelf underneath it so it would hide the bottom part of the circle. And it was at that moment I thought, hmm, I knew that in the laser cut embellishment pack, which in video two I had placed all in here, um, there was a lot of foliage in there and I knew there was one palm tree. So I dug that out and I took note of it on my chart. I'm still going to store these in with my laser cut elements because they are extremely fragile, but I did take note of it on here. I just think they're going to be safer in with my embellishing envelope, which is kind of tough than floating around in a baggie here. So I took note of the possible embellishments. I did incorporate an area where I could possibly put one of these envelopes. And what I would like to point out is that all of this can change. This is just initial decision making. However, I definitely have a jumping off point. So what I'm going to do with this right now is put this in the envelope and then I am going to get out paper pack number three, start designing, and then I will come back and explain everything. So let's just have a little peek at paper pack number three. So it's this one here with a pink flamingo. I had brought in this black and white paper with some pink. And I know what I added. When I created the paper packs in video two, this is what I had. There might have been white cardstock with that as well. I forget. Anyway, this is what I had. And when I was editing the video, I thought, you know what, green would look great with that when I saw the photo on the screen. And I did have a few sheets of green 
paper left over. So I actually just slipped them in the kit. So now I have green with it as well. For the photos, oh no, don't tell me I lost my photos again. Hang on a sec. Here we go. Paper pack number three, the photos. So here are my photos for this one. Let's just have a look here. Okay, yeah, I was thinking of doing this photo here and I have some, I have these in various sizes actually, but I have fewer photos for this story. If you look there, there's a little tiny cat on my balcony. So, so cute. Anyway, so I have fewer photos. I don't plan to use all of these. So, um, for the grid, I don't have to do a nine block grid for this one because I have fewer photos. And some of these grid templates have like four by six and three by four. These are pictures on the balcony of one of my accommodations where I was staying in Jamaica. Really, it was absolutely beautiful. Um, I think I'm gonna use this one here because I have four by sixes and I'm just gonna select some of these. Okay, and again, I do have extra photos. This even in itself represents my story. I don't know if you can see that well because this is just simply a view from my balcony. And if I have extra detailed photos, I do have all of these envelopes. So I am going to keep this as my template for the complementary page, the page two design. What I wanna do right now is just find myself something to go with this because again, I really love these envelopes, this embellishment pack, and I definitely wanna incorporate them into my design. Let me just push this to the side. I kinda of like that pink folder. Again, the idea is that maybe I would add some extra photos in this folder. So I am going to set this aside and what I'm going to do is start, oops, designing my page. I am with a very messy plan, but at least I have an idea jotted down. So basically, as I mentioned earlier, I had fewer photos. So I am going to go with this grid here. I have the main photos that will represent my story. So I'm going to put this aside in case I need it for another page. And on the main page, the focal point page, I decided to use a smaller photo and put it right on top of this folder because if you recall a few pages ago I had one folder that looked very much like this and I kind of had them overlapping so I'm going to make this one a little bit different but again I can use this to slip in extra photos or maybe some hidden journaling if I want. I plan to use the scraps of paper for a layered photo mat over here. And I'm not worried too much about embellishing right now. There are two areas on the page that are already embellished and I am probably going to layer up on top of that. But again, I'm gonna decide that when I'm actually creating the page because I have a bunch of embellishments and they all coordinate with this kit. Now for the page two design, once again, I'm using a grid and I am going to be using the pink as the background because I really loved how that contrasted with the main focal point page here. I did kind of struggle a bit with the decision whether or not I would use the black and white as a mat behind the grid, as the big block behind the grid or the green. At this point, I decided I was gonna go with the black and white and use the green as photo mats. 
that may change, but that is my initial decision. And I wrote here as well, maybe add white photo mats. And again, that will be kind of a game time decision. So what I'm going to do with that is pack all of this, my plan, my paper, my photos, and my file in this baggie. And then I'm going to set this aside and I will get out page pack number four, or I should say paper pack number four, which will soon be a page kit. So this is going on the side. I'm going to get out paper pack number four, along with these big envelope embellishments and my grid templates and I need my photos, of course. Okay, so let's spread out the papers here. This is what I selected for paper pack number four. Now the photos I have for that, how many do I have here? Okay. These ones were pre-printed. This is actually from a different trip to Jamaica. So I have these. These are basically kind of eating photos, I guess. Yes, they're eating photos. So I have those two. I have a big one, but I don't think I'm going to use that. I have, I have these in a couple different sizes. So I really like that photo. Um, and here are the other ones, and they're just different kind of local eatery types. So I've got quite, quite a few photos here. I have some turned upside down. That's what I mean by I selected these as my main photos. These are some other ones kind of at the same spot. They are less my favorite photos, I guess you could say. So I may tuck these in an envelope, but these are the ones that basically represented my story. So again, I printed more than I needed. I'm not recommending you do that. It's just that I happen to do that. And with these extra photos, I may tuck them in a pocket, especially since I have these pockets here. So I'm gonna leave these out like this. I just wanna pick a pocket for them. Hmm, what am I gonna use for that? Pink kind of goes, maybe yellow. I'm really wanting to use one of these. Hang on. It's like you can see I can fold the sides over. It's a nice big pocket. And since I have all of those photos, maybe I'll make big tags with those Elizabeth Craft Design tag dies and stick photos on them. I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to take these, put them away, and when I'm looking at the photos here, I have got five three and a half by fives. I printed these a year ago, so I did not print them in three by four at the time. I'm not going to use one of these grids. I'm going to use one of my typical page two designs, so I'm going to put these aside as well. And what I'm going to do is fast forward and start designing this page. interesting because I kind of changed my mind. Um, my original page kit, I had thought I would be using this dark yellow and more importantly, I thought I was going to be using that as my main page. However, um, when I was selecting the envelopes and I did that, I thought, okay, that was fine. But 
I really wanted this to stand out more. So I started playing around with the paper and in the end, I flipped this one over and I really loved how that pink butterfly jumped off the page with that yellow background. So I know these are going to be my focal point photos. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use a four by six or a three and a half by five. So I've just kind of put them both in there. And obviously that pink kind of jumps out. I'm wearing a pink shirt. So I'm thinking, you know, adding some pink mats here. And as you recall, I did have a bunch of extra photos. So those I plan to put on a couple tags. I'm just gonna adhere them onto giant tags. I have these tag dies from Elizabeth Craft Designs that are huge, and this pocket is huge. So that's kind of my idea for this one. And on the complimentary page, I'm gonna make a design that I often do, which is basically, six blocks here. I have five photos, but one of them I plan to use for journaling and another embellishment area. And yeah, anyway, and then I decided because I really loved how this popped, um, I decided to use the flip side of this, which is just a really nice kind of watercolor with yellow, blue, and pink in it. And I will basically divide my page in half and line up my photos, which I often do. I have mats here and a question mark. I have no idea what I am going to use for photo mats. I will make a game time decision then. But if you look at my sketch, so I've got it written down here. I'm going to use the yellow distressed side as my foundation page. I love that giant pocket, so I'm going to use that, and I'm going to have two photos here. Uh, again, I don't know if I'm going to use four by six, three and a half by five, so I've written them both down. I've got two areas set out for embellishing, basically in a diagonal design, and I often do that on one page because I'm always stretching them into double page spreads, and what that gives me the opportunity to do is add one more embellishment cluster on the complementary page, which will form a visual triangle across the two pages. Again, what I use for embellishing, I have no idea. I only have two or three packs there, so it's not going to take me long to make that decision. And I plan to use, I wrote the flip side of the palm tree, so this kind of watercolor paper, yellow here. The darker yellow is what I'm planning here. I don't have that written down. I will add that. And I will make maybe a little pink division in between here as well, which is going to repeat the pink that's going to be on this other page. So let me get this cleaned up and we're going to start on paper pack number five. Here is paper pack number five. And in this one here, I mentioned earlier, I switched up the green cardstock in a couple of the paper packs. This is exactly what I did. So one earlier, I had put a lighter green as opposed to the darker green. The darker green went in this one. So here is what I have for paper pack number five. I've got quite a bit of paper here. These kind of represent the colors of Jamaica. And in here, here are the photos I've selected. Now, once again, I have a bunch of extra photos here. This, again, is from a vacation I took a year ago. So these are older photos. I had already printed them. And at that point, I wasn't printing in three, and a, in three by four. So these are all three and a half by five or four by six. So I'm just going to work with what I have. And all these are, are photos kind of like beachy, beach life photos, kind of like beach vendor photos, basically. Um, and what I thought I would do for this one, because so far, all of the pages I've designed all are very specific to how I would design a page with 49 in market with those printed papers that have big images on them. So I kind of plop a photo on them, 
create an embellishment cluster and then create a grid type page two design. For this one, and I would like to do it on YouTube, I want to create one of my typical pay, uh, double page spreads. So that's what I thought I would do with this one. First thing I want to do is find myself a folder or something. Let's see here. I'm kind of loving this one. Look, there's two huge pockets and I have quite a few extra photos. So this is what I'm going to use. This one I'm going to try to design live if you don't mind. It's just because it's going to be one of my typical designs. So I thought I would just share the process a bit with you here. Okay. I have this giant circle, this giant sun, and I do like it. I like it. This is fine. It's kind of like a fishy scale, but I prefer this. But it makes me want to cut it out in a jumbo semicircle. I have the custom cutting system from Creative Memory, so I can cut like big circles out. So this sunburst makes me want to cut it out in a circle. That's kind of my jumping off point for the design. Um, I like to create frame style foundation pages and I like white background. So say I have something like that. I would need another black one. Hang on a minute. All right. So Say I've got something like this. Now I need my photos and my big elements. What am I going to do here? Okay. I need a... There's one photo of me. I want that to be my focal point photo. Here we go. It's me at a little shed. Okay. So these are kind of my favorite photos because I bought stuff from these beach vendors. They were very kind people. I bought some jewelry from this guy. This man carved me that cross. It was lovely. Anyway, I still have it. It's right beside me, actually. Um, so I'm thinking something like this. And this, of course, I want to incorporate it on my page. So I don't know. This is what I'm thinking at this point. Now, typically, a typical double page spread for me would have kind of a map that goes across the two pages or a shelf or something like that. But again, I wanted this yellow sunburst. So if I want it in a jumbo circle, I don't, I'm not going to cut it right now, but the idea would be maybe it kind of goes across the two pages. I don't want it to be equal. So say, and this is big if it's going to go on this side. So the smaller bit might go over here. I'm not, I'm not sure. This could all change when I create the page. So say I have this jumbo circle going across the page here. Do it something like this. Then I'm thinking, okay, I want a shelf for underneath here. Um, my shelf could be like this. Ooh, is that too green? I'm not sure. I like the black in here. Okay. I'm also thinking I like doing double mats. Maybe I could do something like this. Let's just see here. Now, uh, for mats, I'm thinking I'm liking the black there. I would add extra photos here, maybe a tag here to pull out with a little bit of journaling. Not sure, not sure about the embellishing, but I'm really actually liking how this is looking. So this would be more of a typical double page spread for me. So let me draw up a bit of a design here. I'm gonna speed this part up for a change.
so I'm all finished here. Basically, you can see my sketch. Once again, I'm not much of a sketch artist, but I wrote here green and black double frame. So this part's going to be white. I have here my sun that's going to be a jumbo circle that's going to go across the two pages, more or less two thirds on the right page, one third on the left page. I've got myself a shelf here. It's going to be in green and black. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to have the green as the big part or the black and white as the big part. I'll make that when I actually create the page. I've got the pockets here, that big pocket embellishment pack. I'll plan to put some extra photos in there, possibly a bit of journaling as well. I have the three photos over here, the smaller ones lined up on the shelf. I have the idea as possibly putting a title down here with a question mark. Again, I will make that decision when I create the page. This little flowery area here and here represents uh, an embellishment cluster. No idea what I will put into it, but my idea is having probably more or less a diagonal design. And that is the idea for this page. I'm going to try to do this one on YouTube. So I'm not going to make you watch me bag all of this up. I'm going to do that and then I will come back on and just say a few closing statements. So that's it for video three in my seven part mini series power scrapping. I have five page kits with photos and page designs and I am ready to scrap. The next three videos in the series will be layout process videos and my plan is to do one focal point page, one page two design and one double page spread. You can expect video four on March 15th. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, Scrapbooking Quebec, I would absolutely love it if you did. If you are a subscriber, thank you very, very much. Have a wonderful day and I will see you soon on YouTube. Bye-bye.